Hello. You find the house that you're looking for. You write up the offer with the realtor. You submit the offer to the seller. The seller accepts the offer. Happy day. You have bought yourself a house. All we got to do now is get from here, contract, to closing. And I want to talk to you. I'm Ron Clymer. I am from Ormond Beach, Florida, and I sell real estate with Keller Williams Realty. And I want to just suggest to you a couple of big mistakes that people make that derail their project on the way to closing. And probably the most usual one, and I can't believe their realtor doesn't warn them against this, but they don't sometimes, and sometimes they do it even when they've been warned against it. But don't go out and buy anything expensive between now and closing. You don't need another car. You don't need any furniture. You don't need anything that costs more than a few dollars. And because here's what happens. You apply for a mortgage and you have what they call income ratios. And one of your income ratios is your total debts compared to your income. Well, all of a sudden you go out to the furniture store and agree to pay $200 a month for furniture. Well, what happens is your, your ratio just went up and it might have gone so far that voila, you're not qualified for the amount you just agreed to borrow. And so as a consequence, the guy at the mortgage company told you you're approved but now with your new debt, you're not approved. So don't be buying any furniture, don't be buying any cars, any of that kind of stuff between now and closing. After closing, you can go buy yourself a car, you can just, just bury yourself in debt if you want to, but wait till closing. Now, also, even if you pay cash for stuff, a lot of people don't realize, but when you apply for a mortgage, you agree that you're going to put $10,000 down. Well, the bank verifies that you've got $10,000 in the bank. Well, all of a sudden you go out and buy something for $2,500 and you don't have enough money in the bank to close. Well, you're going to get some more money from somewhere. You know that, but the bank does it. And so your loan's not approved. So don't be making any major purchases between contract and closing. Now, another thing you can do to derail your transaction between here and closing is get fired from your job or quit your job. No, no, no. Don't get fired. Don't, get, uh, don't quit your job between now and closing. If something comes up, and by the way, I don't make these stories up. If something comes up like your boss says, you've got to work on Sunday all day from eight to eight. And you say, no boss, I'm not working on Sunday. He says, you're working on Sunday or you're fired. Well, maybe some other time of the year, you could say, well, fire me, but not between contract and closing. You get yourself in there and you work on Sunday or whatever crazy thing the boss wants you to do until we get to closing. So once you get to closing, uh, you can tell your boss what you really think, but don't tell him between now and closing. Keep that to yourself and keep your job and, and you'll be glad that you did. Now, a lot of times sellers derail the, de the deal. One way they can do that is set the house on fire. Now that might sound silly to you, but it's the darn truth. You need to be extra careful. Don't let a tree fall on the house between now and closing. Don't let the house catch on fire between now and closing because when stuff like that happens, the deal rarely makes it to closing. And now I'll be you can't avoid a hurricane or something like that, but don't make foolish mistakes that people make that cause things not to get to closing sometimes. Now, another thing that the people do, I guess, you, to derail the closing, and sellers do this. A lot of times, I'll list a house for $300,000. i will ask the seller, Mr. Seller, do you have an existing mortgage? Oh, yeah, Ron, I owe $150,000.
And so I'll tell him how much money he's going to net based on his $150,000 payoff on his mortgage. He forgot to tell me about that lawsuit he had three years ago where the people sued him and they've got a $150,000 judgment against him that becomes a lien on his house. Now, it's not usual that we run a title search before the deal is contracted, but oftentimes this happens. So, Mr. Seller, if you've got a lien on your house, go ahead and tell your realtor because he's going to find out before closing. By the way, there's a lot of things you can do other than just pay that lien off, although usually what happens is you end up just paying that lien off. But if you've got a secret lien, Mr. Seller, tell your realtor. He's going to find out before we get to closing. Now, there's all kind of things that happen with real estate transactions. Uh, as you can see, I have on a t-shirt from First Real Estate School. I teach real estate licensing classes, or at least I did before I retired from that. But about a year ago, I had a young man in class that told the class on Thursday night he was buying a house and he was closing tomorrow, and he was so excited. Well, he came in next Tuesday night and he said the deal didn't close. And the reason the deal didn't close was they went to close it on Friday. And the seller was supposed to bring the death certificate for his mother that owned the house to the closing, but he forgot. Well, the closing attorney said, no death certificate, no closing. Well, then the truth came out. Mama wasn't dead yet. And a lot of times, stuff like this happens with closings. You've got somebody that's claiming to be the owner when they're not. Nobody ran a title search to make sure. Now, this is not a usual thing for realtors to do. I'm thinking that you could have smelled that one coming if you'd had enough experience in real estate, but stuff happens. So anyway, here's what I want you all to know for sure. You never know when your transaction's not going to close. And because that's true, here's just a little social advice for you. When you buy a house, don't tell all your friends you've bought a house. Just wait till the closing, and after it's closed, then you can tell them that you bought a house. And they'll say, well, why didn't you tell us? Oh, I just forgot. And the reason for that is there is a lot more reasons that I'm giving you here that deals don't close. There's all kind of reasons that come up that cause them to close. Some of them are predictable. Some of them are not. So I'm Ron Clymer. If you're anywhere near Ormond Beach and you need, need to buy a house or need to sell a house, give me a call. My phone number is 828 755-6996 and it's a pleasure talking with you. If you got any questions, put them in the comments and I'll answer them for you. Thanks.